Hi, welcome to the Crafts Channel. My name is Corinne Brad, and I've got a great little project for you today, which is brilliant for students, Christmas presents, busy people around the home. They're simple mini oven mitts, just like the little glove puppets. But they're great for just hot pans, you know, you just want to move shelves around in your oven, or if you've got a bowl of piping hot noodles out the microwave, it would just cup quite nicely in there and doesn't burn your hands. They're not too thick because it's just one layer of uh, a wool batting, cotton batting inside there, but it's just enough that you can move things around without singeing your fingers. So we will have a pattern for you to download in the description below, or there'll be a link in the description below. And all you need for this project is two 25 centimetre squares of fabric, one plain and one patterned. So here's the patterned one. And here's the plain one. And if you lay them together, like so. And I've pre-drawn around the template. So do one, they're like footprints really, do one facing up and one facing down. And then there'll be a crease line on the template. If you just draw that line here, because that is what makes the gap for you to put your hand in. We'll pin those pieces together very roughly, like so. And then before you go any further, you just want to chop off that piece of spare fabric on the side. It's not very big. Give yourself a five mil seam allowance between the outline of the template and uh, your cutting line. Because this one little slice of printed fabric is one of the most important pieces. It's what makes the hanging hook. I've just chucked the other bit that I need in the bin. So it's going to be a shorter hanging hook. Fold it in half lengthwise, right sides together, and then just run down the edges I will cut that otherwise I'm just going to get into trouble So you've got a tube, and I can't stress this enough, if you haven't got yourself a piping turner, go out and treat yourself, because they are brilliant for just quickly turning things inside out. They've got a little hook on the end, so you can grab your fabric, and because it's quite a thin hook, it doesn't really make a nasty hole in it, and you can just turn it the right way out. fold it in half and that will be your hanging loop. So we'll pop a pin in that. We'll put it on top of my sewing machine. You can guarantee that within three minutes I'll have forgotten what I've done with it, but hopefully I can see it. And we'll go back to your 25 centimetre square of fabric with your two outlines on it. Now, just chop that in half, like so because you only need to pad one side of the glove and that will be the solid side. So you can use, if you've got scraps, I mean I don't know about you, when I'm quilting or making bags and things like that, you always end up with weird bits of wadding left over that you don't really need. And again, this is a project that's brilliant for using up those bits and pieces. Pin the wadding. to your glove and then before we do anything else with this what we need to do is we need to separate this into two pieces so that line that you have there if you set your sewing machine so that it sews about five seven millimeters either side of that line like 
so. And then you just cut down the middle. And then I'm going to trim up around the outside of this pattern with a seam allowance. more pins in that. There we go. Open them the right way out. Finger press those seams. and then fold back and I'm just going to top stitch along this seam so the correct side of the fabric is facing out. And again, I'm just going to use white thread. If you want to use a coordinating colour of thread, feel free. And we're just going to top stitch along that seam like so. Same with this bit. So we have the uh, thumb piece and the back of the hand piece here. Now this is one of these projects where you think, right, now what do I do now? So what I want is I want my wadding, I want my nice fabric, I want my upper and lower bits, and then, oh, that's where I've gone wrong. Oh, yeah, bear with me. I'm gonna cut this out. And I might use my sturdier scissors as I've got a bit of wadding there. So yeah, cut around, adding your five mil seam allowance to that template line that you've drawn. like so. And then the trick to this is getting your layers right, which I nearly got wrong because I was thinking too far ahead. Unpin it and lift off your lining fabric. So you've got wadding and then pattern fabric right side up. Take your thumb piece and place it on the bottom right sides together. Take your finger piece place it on the top right sides together so you've got a gap in the middle there and then take your loop and just pop it in the side there. While that's all being held, carefully lay your backing fabric back over there and pin it. and pin all of the layers together. Now, most domestic sewing machines will go through this quite easily. I mean, if you can do a quilt on your sewing machine, then you can do this oven glove very easily. Um, if you're in any doubt, if you think your machine's a bit flimsy, just take it steadily. Make sure you've got a sharp needle in there and don't try and go too fast. Now, I'm gonna start here on the edge because we need to leave a gap for turning it out. So if I start here, and just run, and I am just gonna put my glasses on to make sure I follow the seam line. If you follow that line, the template line that you've drawn, and you use that as your stitch line, and I'm just gonna release the foot pressure a little bit because what's happening is because of those layers, the bottom of the fabric is going through the machine faster than the top of the fabric. And although it will be on the inside and it won't show, I want to avoid any wrinkles. 
in my fabric and my face. And this straight bit here. If you do find it's wrinkling, what you can do is make sure that your needle is in the fabric. Just lift the foot and straighten it out again. And just ease it around the curve. The great thing about this glove design is those curves are quite shallow. So it's very easy just to use this hand as a pivot and let your feed dogs do the work for you, rather than trying to force the fabric through. All the way round. And then you're stitching the loop now. So what I will do is just go backwards and forwards over that because that will be the weakest part of the glove, obviously, where you hang it up, the loop will always fall off. And then leave yourself a couple of finger widths to turn it out, like so. I'm just gonna very quickly tidy up these edges again, because in an ideal situation, what I would do is I would run a zigzag stitch all the way around the edges of this to make sure that it doesn't fray because especially if you're giving it as a gift there's nothing worse than someone's in the kitchen every time they take their hand out of their oven mini oven mitt they find odd bits of thread but I won't zigzag stitch it today because I just want to show you and this is where you need to get your fingers crossed for me because I just need to double check that this is actually going to turn out into what it's supposed to turn into. And this will be when I find out if I actually left a big enough hole for turning. Oh, did you hear that rip? <laughs> Didn't leave a big enough hole for turning. Right. Right. Double check that you have caught all of your seams in there. And then your turning gap. Now, you know, if you're a perfectionist, what you might want to do is fold the raw edges in and slip stitch it. If you're lazy like me, you may just want to ensure that all the edges line up. And then hopefully we can turn it the right way out and there you have your oven mitt or noodle bowl holder. So I hope you enjoyed that, I hope we use, uh, inspired you to go out and make some for Christmas presents. You know, you could do a little Christmas set. You could have um, matching tea towels, trim tea towels. You could crochet some dishcloths to go with it in the same colourways. All sorts of things you could do. And I don't know about you, I mean, as you get older, I don't want smellies and, and useless Christmas presents. I want things that I can actually use. So this would be a great gift for your mum or your sister or somebody like that. Um, we've got more demonstrations coming up all the time, so please do subscribe to us so you can keep in touch and visit our Facebook page as well. We've got lots of ideas on there and we will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. If you've been inspired to create, please share your makes with us in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed videos by The Crafts Channel, hit the like button. Want to see more of us? Then click subscribe. See you next time.